Okay, y'all, we got a new project coming up. And this is going to be part of it. So, we got her jacked up. The only thing I'm not taking into consideration, when the front of my truck goes down, the back of it's going to go up. So, let's jack it up just a little more. Here. Okay, that should work. Let's see if we can put you guys over here. So y'all can watch it when the damn thing flips over or whatever it's gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna try to pull out from under. Probably not the smartest thing, but that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, y'all, one thing I ain't liking that wheel. Look at that. That wheel is nowhere close. The whole thing is twisted. It ain't liking that. But we got a motor and a transmission here sitting on this jack. And uh, I'm gonna stay away from it here. We'll walk around this side. 77 model it says it's a 77 so i'm gonna let this thing down and then we can look at it a little more stay back away from it it's got the exhaust and everything on it oh look at that we know what that is is that piece down there i know exactly what that is i'm gonna try to ease it down problem is i can't stand on this side because i gotta work the other side so i'm gonna have to stand over there and hold my hand up there and hope I can keep it from flipping over. See if we can get it down towards the ground. If she flips, I'm just gonna get out the way. Give me an escape route. Okay, there we go. We got her on the ground. Now we gotta find out what it actually is. Um, it does have a holly on it, which I do not like. I'd much rather have an Edelbrook. I don't like hollies. Let's see if I can spin that thing around a little bit. There we go. Okay. It does have the transmission lines. That was something I was wanting. Um, where's the dipstick? Let's pull the dipstick. I probably should have done that while I was over there looking at it. See what the oil looks like. 
Ain't no oil in it. Uh, they probably drained it when they down took it out. That's part of the course. That's something I would do. Oh, there's something we need. There's the transmission mount. Looks like a new one too. So we've got the transmission mount. We've got a starter. We've got an air conditioner bracket. We've got a bunch of bolts here. Um, the two starter bolts are in there. That's the starter bolt. See how it's gnarled? Oh, I can't say that word. But it's got them hatch marks on the end. That means it's starter bolt. That one's another one. There's two from starter bolts. They're gonna get mad when they go to put the rear end back together because uh, they gave me the the U joint. That's gonna take them off. But anyway, got all that. Got the motor. We need to run some numbers on it. See if it's 350. See if it's 400. See what it is. It's got that brace down there like it's 400. The uh, 397 0010. I'm pretty sure that's a GM. 354 bolt main um, Just out of my head there. This transmission's got me intrigued though It does not have a vacuum Like a 350 Here's a 350 for you a 350 transmission. It has this little vacuum here Okay, so you got to have a vacuum to make anything work. It also Has a kick down cable which is back over in here it goes right there you got to have both of them to make it work. This thing you got the kick down, but it don't have the don't have the thing. That's got a. This one has a tail shaft that you can unbolt. So it's got four bolt holes and tail shaft you can unbolt. This one does not solid through. This one does not have your vacuum. Nor does it have a plug-in, you know, 700R4 would have a plug-in here for electronics. This one does not. This one don't even have backup lights. I mean, backup, yeah, backup lights. It does have a kick-down cable, which goes up there. This here is pretty funny. See all this oil all over this distributor here? You know what that come from? That oil line was leaking. All this back here come from that. That's your oil sending unit. That thing's leaking. It's leaking pretty good too. That's why all this oil's over everything. So, hmm. We'll, uh, we'll keep looking around here and see what we can come up with. They said the, uh, the car that I got this from had, uh, had 61,000 miles on original miles. Um, so, we'll see. You like to plug in on the back of the carburetor there? The block off? That's crazy. And then they ran this, the brake booster. Hmm. That's crazy too. So, basically this is a, uh, this is a EPA distributor. I mean, uh, what am I trying to say? This intake is all about emissions. It has the EGR. Remember, we had to get the EGR block off for Ronnie's. It's got the heat tube risers. You know, Ronnie's, we talked about that heat tube riser. And uh, there it is. There's what the old ones look like. This had two tubes that come out. Huh. This, they ran it straight to the PVC, which I don't know that I've seen that done like that before. But I'm not a big Holly guy. I've never really played with Hollies. You got your fuel line that goes down to your fuel pump down there. All of your spark plugs and all. So the, the reason I bought this motor is because it has all the small things, like all the bracket tree for the power steering pump, the bracket tree for their alternator, 
the power steering, I mean the uh, water pump uh, pulleys, the harmonic balancer, the harmonic balancer pulleys, the, uh, the exhaust manifold. Um, all these bolts for the exhaust manifold, the bolts for the, the uh, bell housing, the, the bolts for the alternator, the bolts for like that little bracket there, that's a pain in the butt. Fun. I mean, yeah, I could go buy a crate motor like Ronnie did, but I ain't starting with nothing. I need to start with something so I can switch all this over to that to make something, if that makes any sense. So basically I was buying nuts and bolts and brackets is a good way to look at it. So I'm probably gonna switch intakes. I need a, a regular intake. I might leave that one on there for a while, I don't know. Um, but we need to start it and see if it's gonna run. I got to get rid of that Holly carburetor because I don't like Hollies. So I might end up changing that whole thing there. Hmm. Yeah, I might have to change the whole intake manifold. But we got it. We got it off the truck. Didn't hurt nobody. The wheel isn't on the ground yet, but it's close. And, uh, you know, hopefully it makes for a good video. You like what you see give us a thumbs up for filming it and uh, subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already i'm gonna run these numbers real quick and uh i'll put it in the back side of this video what it actually is here and uh, i'll let you know the transmission is a 200 r which is a four speed transmission it's a 1977 model the motor is a 350 1977 350 um and it come out of a 1977 so it stands the reason it's 350 um they also that number also correlates to 327s but 327s was much earlier this is hooked to a 77 transmission it's got the emissions of a 77 so stands the reason it should be a 77 um the motor, the exhaust manifolds, everything is in line with the 77. So I don't have no reason to think it's not a 77. So be a 350, it says it's somewhere between a uh, uh, 185 horsepower and 370 horsepower. Um, this setup come in a, uh, a Chevrolet Caprice. Something like a Caprice. A, uh, they, was taking, they took this out and put an LS in it. So I bought this. But anyway, we're going to work on it a little bit. See what we can do. Get it running. Said it ran last week when they took it out. So we'll see. They said the transmission was good also. We'll see. Um, it does have the same splines as a 350. So should be easy to put in. But it is a four-speed. So we're going from a three-speed to a four-speed, which gives you an overdrive, basically. And that's what we've got here. It should work pretty good. And we'll see what else we can get into. Uh, I'll get back with you when we start putting this in. Thumbs up the channel. Thank you.